what do you mean? How do you relate to the film Pratidondi? What are your reactions to it? Pratidondi was made in 1970. Uh, it was a time when we were all students as well, or just out of college. So we were really part of the 60s generation. Um, and therefore the film was relevant um, to us, not only as actors, but as people, the sort of people we were at that time. It was a reflection of the spirit of the 60s, uh, particularly the situation in Calcutta and West Bengal in the 60s. But one later realized, talking to people after the film had been made, that um, obviously people found a, a much greater, if you wanted, universal context in it. Um, for instance, young people in other cities like Bombay, Madras, that one talked to later, were also relating uh, to the film and the problems, the situation of the protagonist and so on. You know, when you were sort of approached to the film, what kind of a briefing were you given about your character by Manika? Let's say that in his customary style, uh, there was not in fact a great deal of discussion about the film. There, there was a script reading and um, I would really, looking back on it, I would say that things really fell into place um, in the sense that um, there was um, a sort of very ready identification uh, with the character. So a great deal of discussion was not necessary a great deal of briefing was not necessary. This pattern, um, as I recall, continued during the shooting in the sense that uh, uh, no rehearsals were necessary. I was, being given, um, I was being given a great deal of freedom to modify dialogues, improvise dialogues, um, which I felt necessary. There was not a great deal of prompting unless it was absolutely essential, unless um, I seem to have done something very wrong. Uh, so in that sense, just at a just at an acting at a you know at an actor's kind of level, uh, there was a great deal of in that sense a great deal of identification in the sense that throughout the film, really except in a very few scenes, really all I had to do was to keep the context in mind and really be myself. Uh, by and large, that is the way it went. You know, do you remember any particular scene that uh, in which uh, you did have some problems uh, identifying or you were sort of uh, directed into channelizing your energies in a particular manner by Manikta? Let's say uh, if you take the, uh, if you take one of the interview scenes the, towards the end, the scene that, uh, the scene where Shiddhartha really explodes, uh, that was really the only scene I remember in which I had to act in the sense of uh, go outside of my own personality and really use an actor's skills in the sense of look at a situation and a character objectively from the outside as it were and then portray it. Um, that was so, A because obviously the scene had a great deal of violence which is not normal in everyday life. Uh, that was one reason. The other reason was that that was probably the only scene which was, uh, which for me personally, as a person, which for me personally was out of character, in the sense that as a person, as an individual, I would probably not react like that in a similar situation. So to that extent, in answer to your question, that is probably the only scene where one had to plan beforehand discuss uh, the scene with the director and really act it out. Now how did he sort of, when you said discuss the scene with the director, but what were the kind of discussions that went into it? Um, the discussions were really very, as I remember, very pragmatic discussions in the sense that, okay, I, I should preface all of this perhaps by saying that one, probably one advantage uh, uh, during this film was the fact that I had an interest in cinema, so I knew a little bit about um, you know what cinema meant and what the camera meant and what different different lenses did and so on and so forth. And Manikda knew this as well, so it was possible to discuss things at a pragmatic level. For instance, as far as this scene was concerned, 
um, he had told me that he was going to work in this scene with a two camera uh, setup covering both angles. So therefore, it would be possible uh, not to cut in between, but to continue it as a, as a continuous uh, bit of action. And really the only thing that uh, he kept telling me beforehand was, uh, and which is what I was trying to do, was to try and build up a level of anger uh, uh, within myself, to, to try and keep building it up and hold it within something which could then, and not to worry too much about how during the shot I was going to express it. Um, his point was, and I found that to be very valid, was that uh, if one was able to you know, store this thing up within, then when it came to the shot, it would burst out spontaneously of itself. And that is in fact what happened. You know, a lot of people think that uh, Pratidandi is probably Manikda's political film. You know, the one political film or the, the only political film he has really made. Hmm. Would you agree with that and you look back at the film now? I wouldn't agree with that completely. Uh, it is true that Pratidandi was um, well, as we know, Pratidandi was really his second urban film, if you consider Mohanagar, the big city, his first urban film. But uh, if, even if one forget, uh, forgets the period before, he certainly, I think, if Pratidandi is called a political film, then I think John Aranno is, uh, is equally a political film. Later, so is Ghare Baire, to take two or three examples, so is Sadgati. So I, I don't think it's quite true to say that uh, Pratidandi is his only political film. Okay. Let's, let's uh, change the question and say that a Pratidandi is a political film. Would you agree with that? I, I frankly, I find it difficult to, I know this question has been discussed very often. I've had to confront this question very often. Uh, it is, a ref it is, certainly it's a reflection of its times. It's a comment on the times, but uh, it is not, it is not, in my view, an explicit comment. Yeah. Uh, like in many of his films, it's an understated comment, one. Also like in a number of his films, it really deals with the situation of one or a set of individuals rather than trying to make a comment on an entire situation or an uh, entire, uh, entire context. Indeed, I feel that um, his his feelings and his anger about um, a society, an urban society in decay, those feelings, if anything, are far sharper. I feel in John Aron, in fact. Uh, uh, John Aron, I feel, is a much darker film. It's a much more pessimistic film uh, than Prati Dundi is. Yeah, uh, let's come to another director now, Mrinal Sen. You worked with him in Podatik. Mm. Now, that was also a character of an individual who was escaping from a certain kind of social compulsions. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> how would you react to that particular um, role? How did you react to it and what were the kind of your particular insights into that film? Yeah. Podatik has, a, uh, has an interesting background <laughs> in the sense that uh, Interview, which was the first of that trio of uh, films, uh, was made at almost the same time as Pratidandi was. And uh, Miranda had wanted me to work in interview. And uh, then because I was working in uh, Pratidandi and consciously, very consciously, I think he was developing a different strand of thought in, his, in the three films that he was going to make. Um, he decided against casting me in, uh, in interview. Uh, the point of that is the fact that what he was trying to do with these three films, uh, we had discussed off and on for a long time. And uh, Miralda was obviously trying to develop a very conscious and well worked out line of political thought uh, in the context of the political situation um, at that time, particularly the Noxialite uh, situation. 
Podathik to me was, uh, which was the last of that trio of films. It was actually after the. Uh, it were, well, Interview yeah, Calcutta 71, Podathik. Podathik happened at the time when a, when a, when a degree of disillusionment was setting in uh, about the Noxialite movement. Uh, disillusionment as also the fact that the movement at that time was, was starting to disintegrate a little bit because of various, uh, because of various re reasons, ideological differences, but uh, ideological differences, but also, um, also importantly, because of a great deal of political repression. Um, uh, that that the movement had to face. So, it, it so Podathik in that respect, that whole trio of, of films, uh, Podathik was was a well worked out political film with definite political views, definite political solutions. Rinalda also had working with him. Uh, if you want, he had working with him political theoreticians. Um, to that extent, I must say, uh, I felt personally a little bit out of place um, in the sense, if you want, that my political consciousness wasn't that well developed uh, or, or certainly wasn't, um, you know, my, my, my political views. Uh, one is radical. Yes, we're, we're not radical. To, to that extent, in that whole uh, situation, perhaps one was slightly out of place, which is, of course, neither here nor there um, as far as one's craft as an, um, as an actor goes. Uh, but don't you think your role there, I mean, was in, in a way of that of a, a fairly confused person because once you come yes. in, in touch with um, yes. Simi Garewal in that uh, yes. you know, up, upper class flat, yes. uh, you do have doubts, you do question your whole movement. Right. So doesn't it really fit into that particular I mean, sensibilities? Um, yes, that is, uh, that is true. And it's also true that, uh, you know, as you know, uh, Rinalda, um, as far, as far as his script, screenplay, dialogue, things like that are concerned, um, improvises a great deal, works on, works on a day-to-day, well, -day, if not a day-to-day, -day, a week-to-week -week basis a great deal. So that sort of process of evolution was happening throughout the film. The point of that is the fact that a lot of material that he was writing in, dialogue, action, situations, things like that, had to do with the fact that I was playing the role, that I was the protagonist. So, in fact, that, that is one of the great joys of uh, working with him. The fact that you are really, I mean, if you, if you are interested in doing so, you're, you really do get an opportunity uh, to involve yourself in the, in the construction and evolution of the film uh, that's happening. Also, uh, in that context, Podathik was, uh, the other thing that was happening was that we were shooting in one location, one particular flat a lot of the time. Um, as it happens, we were also, uh, during the time that the film was being shot, we were also staying together, uh, even though the film was being shot in Calcutta. So this dialogue, discussion, evolution, uh, not only in terms of my role, but in terms of the entire film, was was a continuing process. In fact, I think it's only I think two days or three days before it was shot that the end of the film um, was actually evolved, and that also was a kind of a group uh, thing that happened in evolving it. I'll come to another film with him, which you did much later, Akadesh on the name, <coughs> in which there is again uh, your character is a little cynical character of somebody who almost exploits, um, you know, uh, things around him for his own creative process. It's mm -hmm. kind of an indictment of the complete, the mm -hmm. artist as a social with a social conscience. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree with that statement? Could you elaborate on it? If you, you know? yes. Uh, Akal again is a is a film which uh, 
started from, as Mialda has probably told you, started with an unpublished story. So it's, again, it's a film which started with a germ of an idea, a germ that along the way before the shooting and a great deal during the shooting, we just set down roots, flowered and finally uh, took on a form and a shape. That's how the, how the film happened. Uh, as far as uh, the, the sensibility of the, of, the, of the protagonist, the character that I play is concerned, I don't know whether I quite agree that, um, that uh, it was a cynical character. Uh, I think it was a sensitive character in the sense of being sensitive to all sorts of realities around him, all sorts of things that are taking place. Also sensitive politically in the sense of being aware of uh, the political and social background and of being aware of how that background is interacting with a contemporary reality. But not idealistic in the sense of not a person endowed with a burning mission or a zeal uh, to achieve. Therefore, more than uh, cynical, I would say a character steeped in, if you want, if you want realism, a pragmatic character. Uh, good intentions, but not pushing over much to achieve them. In the way, in the process of achieving them, not unwilling to exploit. To that extent, a very genuine reflection, um, I dare say, of the film industry as it exists, of a particular section of the film industry. Could you think of one particular scene from that film which in a way represents that pragmatism, that exploitation? Um, well, this whole business when, uh, when this um, actress when there, is, when there is trouble with this actress and she's sent off, she was sent back to Calcutta. This whole business of, of trying to recruit someone from within the village uh, to play that role, I think that is a reflection of it. Because while the director is doing this, using this production manager that he's recruited in the village and trying to, trying to uh, get, get a girl from the village, what he's really doing is, while he's trying to cast a character, it, he's also really politicking. It's, it's, a, it's a strategic thing that he's doing to establish to everyone that he, in spite of all the problems, he retains and is still able to exercise control. So if you, if you look at it in terms of, of the film industry, I think that's a very key thing, although that's not very often discussed. The fact that power in, in the film industry, regardless of uh, your creative intentions, your creative abilities and so on and so forth, power really is the name of the game in many ways. Uh, the, the, the ability to, to show that you wield power and the ability to use that power. So, a lot of the things that he's doing is really playing this power game. And you think that uh, that exploitation therefore is justified in that particular thing uh, you know, as a... Again as... Uh, well, again... So because one begins to feel that Minal Sen has got a bad conscience, that almost as if having worked for so many years in mm. political films, mm. he's now beginning to realize that he's mm. been exploiting a situation mm. for his own power mm. game. Hmm. Yeah, well, I was going to say that uh, uh, from two or three films before, uh, uh, before Akal, starting, let's say, with Agdin Protidin, uh, Mrialda had obviously moved into a, into a, let's say, a different kind of phase where, where, where he was becoming softer, more understated, um, was getting more involved with individual situations, um, taking a more, let's say, personalized view of things, commenting less on, on, on broad social issues and realities. And, and if you look at it in that context, Akhale Shandhane also is part of that. In, that. in that, the comments, while being critical, are understated. And 
your point about a bad conscience, I think are true, are true, except that obviously he's not talking only about his individual bad conscience, but about the bad conscience of the industry. And what is interesting, a particular segment of the industry, uh, which, which calls itself the art cinema, the parallel cinema, the political cinema, the bad conscience that that segment of the industry might have reason to have. 